What is genocide in international law? There's been some major controversy about this very recently in the UK. Let's try and make sense of it. So what's happened recently? Well, this. Slavery was not genocide. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so many damn blacks in Africa or in Britain, would there? You know, an awful lot of them survived. And mm -hmm. So, David Starkey is a British public figure. He has an academic background and he has frequently appeared on TV and radio in the past. What he seems to be saying is that genocide is about the mass killing of a group of people. And his assumption seems to be that if too many members of that group survive, then no genocide. Is that true? What is genocide? What I want to do is take this opportunity to explore a little bit more carefully what genocide actually is in international law. The specific notion of genocide has its origins in the law. It was first proposed by a lawyer around the time of World War II, and it didn't take long for states to come together and agree upon a legal definition of genocide in an international treaty in 1948. And that definition goes like this. As you can see, there are a number of moving parts here. I just want to draw attention to two main aspects of this definition. If I'm going to be committing genocide, according to this definition, first of all, I need to have a particular mental state. I need to be intending to destroy in whole or in part a certain group. It could be a national group or an ethnic group, a racial group or a religious group. This already indicates that the legal definition of genocide may be rather different from what, for instance, David Starkey seems to be assuming. When it comes to my intention, I might only be intending to destroy a group in part, it needs to be a substantial part, and there is case law that has clarified that, but I might only be intending to destroy a part of the group that I can get my hands on uh, within the territory, the region that I happen to be in. On top of that, there's a second aspect of this that's interesting, and that is the actions that I might be taking if I'm going to be committing genocide according to this definition. At the top of that list is killing, killing members of the group. But there can be other actions that I might be taking as well. So for instance, I might not be killing members of the group, but I might be instead causing severe physical harm or mental harm to members of the group. For instance, I might be putting in place measures that are designed to minimize the number of births within the group. I'm not killing members of the group, but I want the group to slowly die out over time. Any of these actions would count as relevant actions for the purposes of genocide, which is striking and which seems to be different from you know, a common understanding of genocide, perhaps the, the understanding that, that Starkey himself was trading on, this notion of mass killing of people. That certainly was, in my case, um, an assumption that I had about what genocide was before I actually came to study uh, the, the issue in international law. To bring this full circle, it is not the case that David Starkey was providing a fully informed account of what genocide is. At the same time, this is an opportunity for us to think about actually the definition of genocide in international law. And it raises some interesting questions. This is a common question about the way in which legal definitions of things differ from common understandings. So for instance, the legal definition of genocide, the legal definition of charity, the legal definition of murder, these may be rather different from the common understandings of those notions. And that prompts all sorts of questions about you know, why that is. Um, is this problematic? Is this a case of lawyers 
um, making their profession very technical and closed off so that you know they are the experts and they can charge large sums of money very substantial fees to deliver their expert advice to members of the public. These are some of the bigger questions I think in play generally in relation to the law and perhaps that's something that we can explore in another video. On that note, thank you very much for watching guys. See you in the next video.